What is going on everybody, it's Stas here. Welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be talking about the top 10 stocks that I'm watching and looking to trade here in the second week of May, heading into this week of May in 2019. So typically, every Sunday I'm talking about a bunch of stocks that I'm watching and some that you guys actually ended up commenting on Friday's video. And I got quite a few comments, so I'm going to go through through as many of those stocks as I can. But before we do get into the topic of today's video, for everybody out there that finds value in these videos, you enjoy the content here on YouTube, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. It really supports me and supports the channel in general. And if you guys are new to the channel, I have two links down below in the description box, one of them being the Strive Smart Discord group and the other one being the Strive Smart Facebook group. And I guess guarantee you if you join those two communities you will find a ton of valuable information and you'll be able to interact with a bunch of like-minded motivated people that are in the stock market investing and trading personal finance minded people entrepreneurship stuff like that so join those communities they are linked down below in the description box and without further ado let's just talk about it guys what are the 10 stocks that i'm personally watching you can see here this is the chart of the spx this past week the s p 500 we saw quite a sizable dip after the fed came on on wednesday at 2 p.m eastern standard we saw a drop from about 2950 all the way down to about 2900 and we can see exactly what i'm talking about here the market took a pretty sizable not a crazy sizable but a pretty sizable pullback of about two percent here a, a retracement that we quite honestly have needed right because if we're judging on this 30-day chart you know, we can see we've been straight pushing up for a couple of weeks here. So this big pullback was needed in my personal opinion. And we saw that very big, that very strong bounce back day this past Friday where we ended up gapping up aggressively. And now we're pretty much close. We closed and we're pretty much hovering around that area where we, er where we were able to hit an all-time high this past week. So that's just the standing of the market right now, guys. We can see, and I talked about this in the previous couple of videos last week, that we ended up holding this 180 simple moving average support on the 20-day, one-hour chart. This was actually on Thursday. We were able to bounce on that level at about 2,900. We gapped up, confirming the bounce at that point. And on the 184-hour chart, we were able to hold the 50 simple moving average. All of these signs are pointing in my eyes to the continuation of the uptrend. So that's kind of a just brief overview of the market and what happened last week. If you guys want to see a more in-depth video and uh, update on the stock market in general, the NASDAQ, the Dow, and the SPX, just go to the uh, two, I think two uploads ago, Friday's upload, go check out the beginning portion of that video. I go into more depth on that. So let's just hop into it, guys, why you clicked onto the title of this video, the 10 stocks that I'm personally and some that you guys called out that I'm looking to trade for this upcoming week, right? So let's just start off with INTC, also known as Intel, guys. This is one that a bunch of you called out. I looked at it, did some research on it, broke some technicals down, and I'm personally loving the reversal that we are seeing here or the beginning of the reversal that we are seeing here on Intel Corporation. So let's break this one down very quickly. We'll bring out my handy dandy support resistance um, you know, little tool here so we can draw out some lines. And what do we see here, guys? We're seeing a very, very good thing right now in terms of uh, or pattern, should I say, in terms of Intel. Take a look at this very strong resistance level from a couple of weeks to a couple of months ago, really from the beginning of August all the way to about the beginning towards the middle of February. There was a, there was a very, very strong resistance roughly at about $49 to $50 per share, right? We noticed that there. And once we were able to break out of that level of resistance more towards the middle of February, 
we then made this level, created this level as a new support, right? Because when we're breaking out of a resistance, that's then becoming a new support level, right? So we can see that's a very good sign that we wanted to push up start an uptrend and break out of those levels of resistances, right? And just taking a look at the price action over the past couple of years for Intel, we actually were at about $57 per share back in eight, uh, May of 2018. We sold off very aggressively. And once we were able to get out of that resistance at about $50, you know, this was a very good trade a couple of months ago in my eyes because we were filling the gap back up to that previous all-time high, which which is roughly at about $57 to $58, right? And now we're noticing a very similar thing, right? We're noticing the pullback from the all-time high, pretty aggressive pullback, and that we're holding that level of resistance as a new support at about $50 per share, right? And we can see that because we're popping up aggressively. We're seeing some green bullish candlestick starting to form, and it's looking like we're trying to make our way back up, right? And not only, you know, are we holding above that 49-ish level, we're also holding above this 50-50 level, which was also a resistance from the beginning of February that we just broke, or really broke out of towards the middle of February. So these are all good signs for Intel stock, right? And what I looked at on the smaller time frame charts, which is also very attractive to me, is we're at we're actually breaking out of the 50 simple moving average resistance here on Friday's trading session. Take a look at this, guys. Over the past couple of weeks, this 50 SMA, this green line that you're seeing, as well as the EMA, the light blue line that you're seeing, both of these moving averages have been acting as resistances, right? That's not really hard to tell here. Resistance all the way down, resistance all the way down from the green 50 SMA, and now we're noticing the smaller time frame EMA line here, which is the quickest reacting moving average based on the way I have it set up, is crossing above the 50 SMA, which is a very bullish sign. Remember, when a smaller time frame EMA or um, you know moving average in general is crossing above a larger time frame moving average, this is a very bullish sign. And I actually have a video dedicated to this. Just type in moving averages and my name, Stas Surface, on the YouTube search bar. And you'll be able to see that video. It goes deeper into depth on seeing and identifying trends using, you know, moving averages. Very important video if you haven't yet seen that. So we're noticing, again, we're breaking out of the resistances, the bullish cross here, and we're breaking up towards the $51, $52 level. These are all very good signs that we are reversing. So the first stock, guys, INTC, I am really liking it now. So the next resistance, honestly, is right where we are. Right, previous support level was in the beginning of March at about $51.85, $52 flat, right around here, and that's exactly where we are right now on Intel stock. Right, you're seeing we're right there. Obviously, when a candlestick or candlesticks, rather, you know, when they break below support levels, those levels become new resistances. And once we break out, if we break out of this level, that's going to be giving me even more confirming signs that. Intel is going to continue to push up. So INTC is the number one stock, no doubt about it, for this upcoming week. One of the number or one of the top ones that I'm personally watching. So Atvi is another one that we talked about this past week. They just reported earnings. They fell on earnings from about $50 per share down to about where they are at right now. And we can notice. It's kind of been choppy, right? The trading on Atvi, to be quite frank, has been very choppy, especially this past Friday, right? Take a look. They reported earnings. They dropped. They popped back up, got rejected by the 180 simple moving average, pushed down to 46, popped back up to 48, got rejected again, pushed down. So it's very, you know, up and down, up and down, up and down, choppy movement here for ticker symbol ATVI, which is why, to be quite frank with you all, I'm going to be waiting for a reversal in terms of this smaller time frame chart. And by that, I mean 
Just like we saw in Intel, right? We ended up breaking out of the 50 SMA resistance, right? That's what I want to see on ATV. I want to see a break out of these moving average resistance levels that we're clearly seeing as resistance points right now, which is the 180 SMA. I want to see a break out of there. Are we going to see that on Monday? Tuesday, Wednesday, we don't quite know. Honestly, all I'm looking for is just to wait and see when that is going to happen. Because when that happens, if that happens, right, that's going to be, you know, in my personal opinion, a very good sign that we are reversing to the upside here on ticker symbol ATVI. And if we're just judging on the 180 chart, again, we're seeing the choppy movement, but we are seeming like we are maintaining the 180 SMA support as well as the 50 SMA support, which is a really, really good sign in my personal opinion. So at V, ticker symbol ATVI, keeping this one on the watch list and watching it for this upcoming week, especially on the smaller term time frames to see are we breaking out are we going to reverse in pattern to the upside so the third one amzn ticker symbol amzn this is amazon one of the biggest companies out there no one really i doubt anybody doesn't know amazon right amazon was actually in the news quite a bit because we saw berkshire hathaway um was buying amazon do we know if it was warren buffett making those decisions or if it was one of his um you know people that work under him I don't know that for sure. I, I'm not exactly sure, but I don't think it was Warren Buffett buying the shares. It might have just been somebody working under him like Ted or Todd. I'm sure if you guys um, follow Warren Buffett, you probably know who they are. But nonetheless, that doesn't really matter, right? Amazon had a pretty good day this past week or past day, honestly, on Friday. It was up $61.64, up 3.24%. And again, we saw the market pullback on the S&P 500 in the beginning of this video, Amazon followed and pulled back as well from about 1959 down to about 1880, that, that general area, right? And from there, it seems like we ended up holding the 50 simple moving average support, which is a very good sign for the continuation of the uptrend. And as of right now, guys, it's looking like, honestly, we're breaking out of the old resistance at about 1957, 1958-ish right here. So this is a good sign that Amazon could be heading up to $2,000 per share. I know that is quite a bold statement, but this breakout we're seeing could be sending us, let's say, maybe to 1980 before we see another pullback. And from that pullback, if the pattern stays intact, right, if it follows this pattern that it's been on, from that second pullback that we might see, we could launch up to $2,000 per share if the markets are still pushing up. Let's say if the S&P hits a $3,000 um, mark, I personally think Amazon is going to be upwards of $2,000 per share. And if we're just judging on some um, you know, old resistance levels here, Take a look, guys. We broke this one. Old support, right? That was a resistance. We broke that, right? So now, the next spot we need to be heading to, or it seems like we're going to be heading to based off old resistances, is going to be right at around 2025. Notice that, right? So we're pretty much just trading in this new channel now from 1960-ish up to about 2025. And I do like, and I do see potential in Amazon filling that gap up again. If the markets, especially the S&P 500, are healthy over these next couple of weeks, month or two, if that does end up happening, if we do stay healthy in the markets in general, I don't see why Amazon honestly won't be able to hit $2,000 per share. So OXY is the next one we're going to be talking about in this video. And shout out to you, Sabio Legato. I hope I am pronouncing that right. Sabio Legato from the Discord chat, very active member. He ended up shouting or calling this one out, should I say, in the call out section. And if I do recall correctly, I think he's been buying this one on the dip. And we notice that this one is holding a critical support level right now, from my understanding, at about $57, right? We aren't seeing, to be quite honest, we aren't seeing a full on reversal quite yet on 
OXY, but I understand where he's coming from in terms of, um, you know, buying this. He's probably just buying it as it's dipping down, building a nice strong position for the upside that it does have to offer on this big dip that we are seeing. If we're just looking on the three-year, one-week chart, we can see how battered down um, this stock has gotten, right? And to be honest, I don't know much about this stock, Occidental Petroleum Corp., but just judging off the technicals, guys, we're seeing it's been getting battered. And looking back to 2017, this is another reason why he probably was buying this one. We can see in 2017, they were at the same level that they are right now, roughly at about $55 to $58 per share. And last time they were at this level, they were able to pop all the way up from $57 up to $87 per share. So this is actually a pretty good example of not really having to wait for the confirmation of the reversal every single time, right? Sometimes, especially if you're a bit more risk tolerant, right? You don't have to wait for a full on trend reversal to the upside before adding in more money. If a stock has been battered down, like this one has been battered down, right? You can slowly add into the position if you do see potential upside from it based on previous patterns and based on future, the future for the company, right? So we are slowly starting to see a bounce up here, but why am I saying it's not a full on reversal quite yet? Because we're still trending below the 50 simple moving average here, which has been a resistance. And if we look on the 20 day, one hour chart, we can see how evident that is, right? We're still trending below the 180 SMA. Actually, let me correct myself. We're actually slowly breaking out of that 50 SMA resistance, but we're still trending below the 180. 80 simple moving average resistance. So in my personal opinion, right, I think this one could end up popping up here because historically we've seen it's done that. And you may be asking yourself, Stas, does it always matter or it doesn't it not matter if it happened before? That doesn't really indicate future price. And that is true in some cases, right? But we notice in a bunch of other stocks, a bunch of ETFs that we do analysis on, you can really judge previous movement on future um, for future movement, right? So I can see why he's doing that. And honestly, this is a pretty good call out. So if we do end up getting that reversal to the upside, maybe others out there would feel more comfortable seeing this one in the $60 level. You know, if it does get up there, you know, I'm personally most likely going to start trading this one. I do see a lot of potential in it. And if we're going to the 184 hour again, you know, at $60 per share, we're going to be getting out of that 50 simple moving average resistance. And we might slowly start start to do something like this, right? Where we ended up popping all the way up to $66, $67. And if we break out of that level of resistance, which is a very strong level at about 68 bucks, you know, that's going to be the next thing we need to see before getting into the 70s, mid 70s, stuff like that. So OXY, thank you. Thank you, Sabio for the call out. I really do appreciate that. So let's go over to the next one, which is actually one that I just ended up buying this past Friday, guys. And that one is Google stock, guys. Ticker symbol G-O-O-G. -O -O -G. And this one reported earnings last week. I'm sure a lot of you know, they ended up tanking from nearly $1,300 per share down to about where they were at about $1,158, $1,160-ish. <coughs> and now we're trending up back into the 1185 level on a very strong Friday performance at about $22 increase in price up nearly 2%. So very obvious here, guys, the margin of profit that was opened on Google was roughly 10%. And I've been talking about this one over the past couple of videos that once this one shows a bottoming out point, a reversal to the upside, I think it's going to offer a ton of uh, margin, a ton of potential for a swing trade, which is why I ended up scaling into it very minimally on Friday. So if we look on the closer term charts here and why I ended up buying into Google is very similar to, uh, what was it? Intel, the first one, I believe on the smaller time frame charts, Google is actually breaking out of its moving average resistances, right? We're seeing a bullish cross here, the EMA crossing above the 180 SMA, the 50 SMA crossing above the 180 SMA. These are all bullish trends on Google, guys. Notice how it's not 
really the candlesticks aren't being rejected by the moving averages now they're now acting as support levels guys so this is a very interesting pattern on google and it could be the start of a reversal right who knows i could be completely wrong and we might gap down to 1145 who knows guys but that is why i scale into my positions right i'm not looking to add a hundred percent of my position up front i like adding more into the position as it continues to push up right so i'm in minimally right now with about 20 percent roughly of my goal position and i do plan on adding more once and if we crack above twelve hundred dollars per share that's google guys g-o-o-g -O -O -G. so the next one I want to talk about is ticker symbol ELF, guys. Elf Beauty. This is a stock that a lot of people in the community have been talking about, right? A bunch of people in the comment section of my videos, some other people on other YouTube channels, right? This one has been on fire. We can see from 670 back a couple weeks ago, honestly, this is absolutely crazy in my eyes, from 670 up to where we are right now, that's nearly a double up in the stock price. It actually might be a double up off the top of my head. What's 650? 650 times two is $13.00. Okay, it pretty much is a double up, right? It pretty much is a double up on ELF. So ELF has been holding the 50 SMA as a support, right? We've been popping out of the resistances that were resistances a couple of months ago. We're seeing a bullish cross here of the 50 SMA crossing above the 180 SMA. This is looking very, very solid on ELF. But the one thing I want to see now before taking a swing position on it is you probably guessed it. Yes, I want to see a pullback and a retest on or roughly on the 50 simple moving average support, which would put the stock roughly at about 1250 to maybe 1270 maybe 1280 right around that range and until we get if we get that pullback right until we get it i'm not looking to add money into it and also mind you i just saw this right now earnings are on the 8th of may in 2019 so today's sunday Six is the Monday, seventh is Tuesday, eighth is Wednesday. This Wednesday, Elf is reporting earnings. Who knows what that's going to do to the stock, guys? So I'm probably, I am honestly 100% am going to be waiting until after earnings to see what their earnings is looking like, the guidance, if it's positive, negative, the stock's reaction to the earnings before I do end up potentially adding a position into it. So ELF Elf Beauty guys keep that on your watch list if we're looking historically on a longer term chart here you know this is a stock that was once $20 per share I believe it might have been even higher 20 $32 per share a couple years ago. So this is absolutely unbelievable, the comeback that it's making. And who knows, guys, this one can continue to soar up. I'm definitely keeping an eye on it for this upcoming week and for the entire month here and for the next couple of months, to be honest, I'm watching Elf Beauty. So MSFT, good old Microsoft stock, guys. In my opinion, the most underrated Goliath company out there is Microsoft. Microsoft. A lot of people, they love talking about Apple, right? Google, Facebook, which I'm guilty of, right? I talk about those, I think, a lot more than I talk about Microsoft, right? People love talking about Amazon, Netflix, but people forget to, uh, you know, they, they forget to realize that Microsoft is probably, or I don't know right now in terms of market cap, but it was two months ago, I think, the biggest company in the world, right? When Apple took that tank, when, uh, you know, Amazon did, you know, I think Microsoft was the top dog at one point in terms of market cap, but people fail to realize this, right? Which is absolutely crazy to me. So a bunch of people were asking me about Microsoft, right? Just like the market, the SPX dipped, Microsoft took a dip as well, because again, it's one of the biggest companies when the overall market takes a hit, Big market cap companies, especially ones that are trillion. I don't know if it's trillion right now. I forget. I haven't checked in a couple of uh, weeks. But market caps that are in the trillions, you better believe they're going to get hit when the market pulls back. So that's why we saw that pullback. But just like Amazon, we saw the hold on the 50 simple moving average support and the slow bounce back. So this, honestly, guys, if the markets do well this week, I think Microsoft should be heading up 
to $130 easy per share this week. And especially if, let's say we have a green week in general, let's say the SPX moves up 1.5 to 2% this week, or even 1, 2% right around that level, you know, I think Microsoft can get up to 130, 131, maybe to test all-time highs again. So before me entering a position, before I enter into a position in Microsoft, I would love to see a brief pullback on it and a retest, maybe at about 128.50 on this 50 simple moving average, right? I'm going to judge it and see what it's looking like pre-market hours tomorrow. If we're slowly pulling back down here and we do a little like a kiss off the 50 SMA. We saw this with Apple a couple of days ago where it pulled back and bounced right off of it, right? That was the day after they reported earnings, I believe. I think I did trade it that day. If we see that on Microsoft, I think that would be a nice entry point on a pullback for a swing trade. So Microsoft, guys, it's looking pretty solid, right? The company is amazing. We all know that. Underrated. Just keeping an eye on it and just watching the markets in general because, again, the markets influence Microsoft a lot, just like they influence Apple, Amazon, these big, big, big market cap Goliath companies. So NVIDIA is the next one that somebody actually wanted me to talk about. NVIDIA, this is one that is kind of in a funky spot right now, right? We're noticing... Let me just try to, uh, let's just go to a closer term chart here so we can break it down. Actually, no, let's go back to the 180. That one's actually better. So we're noticing NVIDIA right now, it's kind of trading in between $172, the support level right here, and about $183 to $184 where there's a clear resistance right now on NVIDIA. So it's kind of trading in between those two levels. At the same time, it's also making off these patterns that we're seeing, it's also making lower highs, right? The high at about 192, the next one's at about 190-ish, right? And the one right here, although we haven't fully gotten rejected to the downside, you can still say it's a lower high at about $183. So the pattern right now is a bit funky, right? Let me see if I can draw this one up so we can see exactly what I'm talking about, right? We can see it's kind of almost in a wedge at this point where I want to see, are we going to get rejected by the 50 simple moving average and maybe break the support of this wedge? And that would be a bearish sign in my personal opinion to where we might be testing 172 again, or are we going to pop out of this resistance? And if we see that pre-market hours that we're breaking out of this 50 SMA resistance, that's a very good sign. And if we break out of the resistance of this wedge, that's going to be an even better sign that this is a bullish move. That could honestly be a breakout pattern on NVIDIA. And from there, the next resistance is going to be about $185 to $186-ish per share. And if we were to break that, the next spot would be $190 and then so on. So I like this. I really do like this call out because a bunch of the stocks we've talked about today were kind of easy patterns to break down, right? But NVIDIA, it's a bit more complicated. It's a bit more in a, um, you know, sticky situation, if that makes any sense, because there's a bunch of different things going on here. So just keep an eye again on this wedge. Are we popping up, popping down? Are we going to pop down or break down rather and make a lower high and make a lower low? If we do, that's going to be a start of the, a bearish pattern, in my personal opinion. And mind you, the 16th and 11 days from now, they are reporting earnings as well. So keep that in mind if you do plan on adding or swinging NVIDIA. Understand how earnings can impact a stock. So two more on the list, guys. Excuse me, Facebook and UWT crude oil. People wanted me to talk about that. We're going to talk about that at the end of this video. So let's get into Facebook, guys. Facebook is another one of those stocks that I'm personally swing trading, right? I got in at about 193, holding on to the shares right now. And Facebook, to say the least, has been on an absolute roller coaster ride, right? Take a look at this. We popped up the 202, sold off the 190. Popped up to 195, sold off to 189, and now we're back up to the 195 level. And what I'm really liking and what I've been talking about over the past couple of videos is that 
we're maintaining this 195 level as a new support. I've been saying this, guys, and I know you've been, I've been saying, or rather, I know that you know I've been saying this if you've been watching the videos, right? I've been saying how I want Facebook to hold the 195 level throughout the day and after market hours before me adding more money potentially, right? Because I want to see really it to hold this level and start to pop up back to 200 because notice how every time we hit 195 over the past couple of trading days, we ended up selling off, right? 195 sold off. 195 sold off. We almost got there, 194, and then we sold off. And the fact that we're holding it now is a very good sign in my personal opinion. So for this week, guys, Facebook, just make sure, watch, and just keep up with it and see, is it going to hold the 195 level this week and slowly start to get to the 196, 197, maybe 198 level. At that point, I'm probably going to be adding more money into it, and we're going to be getting closer to $200 per share, which is a very, very good sign for my swing position, right? So Facebook, not too much to talk about. Just keep an eye on those levels. So UWT, or actually, let's just talk about crude oil in general, right? Because crude oil is a future that... We trade two ETFs based upon, one of them being UWT and the other one being DWT. UWT goes up whenever crude oil is going up, and whenever crude oil is selling off, DWT is going up. So we notice, guys, very clear here on the 20-day, one-hour chart, you know, crude oil has been getting crushed. So we were in kind of this downwards channel here towards the beginning of April, right? We noticed that here based on these trend lines and we broke out of it and that was a very bullish sign. From there, we were able to get to 66 bucks. Very nice there. We, we called that bullish um, you know, channel out. We popped out of it. We pushed to a high. And now, since then, we've been selling off aggressively, right? We noticed the 50 SMA is crossing below the 180 SMA, right? That's a bearish sign. The candlesticks are being rejected by these moving averages. The moving averages are acting as resistances, and that's been carrying on over the past couple of days, right? Pretty much since the end of April up until now, literally on Friday, guys, you know, we got rejected towards the end of the day or really for the entire day by that 50 SMA here on the 180 or the 20 day one hour chart. So I'm honestly not really keeping an eye or I am honestly, I am keeping an eye on the longer term charts, but I want to see what this is going to do on the smaller time frame so we can see are we breaking out of this level for the upside right are we going to maybe retest this level at 6350 which is a resistance now you know this is things or these are things rather that i'm looking to see for a bullish move on crude oil so if we were to break out of this resistance here that's step one right step two would be breaking out of 6350 and then step three would be to break out of the 180 sma resistance those are the three steps we need to see for a bullish move on crude oil but let's say we see the future market at 6 p.m eastern standard let's say we're trading down here let's say we're cracking back down into the low 61s maybe 60s you know that's just going to be the continuation of the downtrend at that point the rejection here on the 50 sma is still going to be valid and we're going to be pushing to a lower low which isn't a good sign for the UWT people out there, because again, UWT is going up whenever crude oil is going up. So that's kind of the breakdown here. Just keep an eye on what we're going to do in terms of these moving averages. You know, let's say we gap up and break into the $63 level, crude oil and UWT, especially UWT, it's going to be a great move on Monday, in my opinion, right? But let's say we end up gapping down even further, DWT may be the move instead of UWT. So I'm going to end off the video here, guys. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, leave a comment, let me know what you think, let me know what you're trading this week. I would love to know what you guys are doing. And if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, if you enjoy the video, you enjoy some other content you see on the channel, 
feel free to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you're notified every single time that I do make a video. And I actually made a video earlier today. It's more of an investing focused video on three keys to becoming a successful investor in the stock market through my experience over the years. Go check out that video. It's going to be linked here somewhere. You can click on it. Go watch it. I guarantee you'll find a bunch of valuable information there. And don't forget to join the Strive Smart Discord, the Strive Smart Facebook, linked down below. I'll catch you all in the next video. Good luck tomorrow. Have a great rest of your weekend. Peace out.